Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news that is coming out of uh, RT and the Associated Press with a private interview with President Bashar al-Assad. In the latest report that we're getting here from RT, President Bashar al-Assad speaks about how that the U.S.-led coalition that struck the Syrian army last week on the 17th was actually no accident at all. Let me play you a clip of what he has to say. Attack on Syrian troops was an accident. Do you accept their explanation? No, 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 it's not because uh, it wasn't accident by one airplane uh, uh, for uh, once, let's say. It was four airplanes uh, that's been, uh, that, that kept attacking the position of the Syrian uh, troops for nearly one hour or a little bit more than one hour. You don't commit a mistake for more than one hour. This first, second, you're not attacking. They weren't attacking a building in a quartier. They were attacking uh, a huge place uh, constituted of uh, uh, many hills. Uh, and there was no uh, terrorist uh, adjacent to the Syrian troops there. At the same time, the ISIS troops or the ISIS militants attacked right away after the American uh, strike. How could they know that the Americans are going to attack that uh, position in order to gather the militants to attack right away, to capture it uh, one hour after the strike. So it was definitely intentional, not unintentional, as they claimed. Did Syria or Russia... As we've reported in our broadcast earlier this morning, we've already shared with you how that the different, um, uh, how that there was a U.S.-led delegation for peace that went to Syria not too long ago, and they actually spoke at the United Nations claiming that the U.S. is being fed a, a whirlwind of propaganda in order to justify this war that is happening in Syria. It said is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant in what the U.S., whatever U.S. policy is. So what we saw in, in Damascus and what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus belies the propaganda that has um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time. It's hard for us to ignore this propaganda. It is so uh, well orchestrated. And I would have to kind of add on to that myself that the, the governments that we are seeing, especially in light of the latest article that came out by TASS, the uh, Arabic source, as well as uh, um, uh, FARS, which happens to be an Iranian source. I'm not very trustworthy in FARS news agency, but TASS, I do trust their news reporting, but both are reporting that there was an attack done on uh, an intel group of six nations in Aleppo, working inside of Aleppo, that incl included officers from the United States, Britain, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Qatar. All six of these nations working together to topple Bashar al-Assad, working inside of Aleppo. This, my friends, puts the Americans, the Israelis, the British citizens, all the citizens of these different countries at a great risk because of the decisions that are being made by the leaders of these nations. And believe me, there are many people that would not want these types of wars. And, it's, and when we take a look from the Israeli perspective or the Jewish perspective here, we have to consider this. Yes, years ago, the Syrian government came in and attacked uh, Israel from the north. Israel, in response into this war here, were able to push the Syrians back and captured the Golan. Some still say that it is an occupied territory. But in biblical times, the Golan was part of the Israeli land as it were. 
But in 2011, we find that Bashar al-Assad, working with John Kerry, was willing to make a peace deal with the state of Israel. They were trying to bring about a lasting peace, and a peace that maybe no doubt would have allowed Israel to keep the Golan, but just bring about a peace between the two nations. But for some reason, Bashar al-Assad didn't want to give John Kerry everything that he really wanted. And that may have had to do with the pipeline that he wanted to run through his country so that he could take everything. So the deal falls through, and the next thing that we know, that the U.S., instead of trying to broker peace between Israel and Syria, the U.S. begins to sponsor all types of terrorist groups and mercenaries, ISIS they create first, and then later to find out when ISIS doesn't do everything they want, they create the moderate rebels, they give them all kinds of money. They begin to do sanctions, which as the, uh, the UN delegation, the peace delegation that went to Syria finds out that the sanctions are hurting children, not the government. So it's been a constant barrage to bring down a nation. And as far as the Jewish people are concerned, God never gave us the land of Syria. So what business does the Israeli people have to do with Syria? They're not, we are not at war with them. And we might say, as we watch more propaganda media coming even to Israel, where you find that uh, uh, shelling is falling over, spilling into the, into, to the Golan. And then, of course, the uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has responded by hitting uh, Syrian army targets inside of uh, the Syrian territory just across the border in response, only to know that it was never the Syrian government that fired it. But... Prime Minister Netanyahu has a no-tolerance policy with the Syrian government and holds them responsible. But could it be that the Israeli government has fallen victim to the aid money that has been promised by President uh, Barack Obama and sits there and bombs who he wants him to bomb? This is not the true Israeli spirit. It's not the true Israeli people that would act in such a manner. Neither would the Americans, the U.S., that, that do not support President Barack Obama. They do not support his uh, totalitarian type of uh, attitude going around trying to conquer all the nations around the world. It's not the American people. It's not the spirit of Christianity, genuine Christianity, and it's definitely not the spirit of Judaism to go beyond that which God has already given us. So we question the actions that are happening here, and we see that war is about to totally engulf the entire region. And on top of it, you have to remember, President Putin has a strong relationship with Prime Minister Netanyahu, and he thought he had had a re-established relationship with President Erdogan of Turkey, only to find out that both leaders have military working against what he's trying to do inside of Syria. Well, that begins to cause an undermine of the relationship. And I might add, as I've stated on many broadcasts already to President Putin directly, I've stated over and over and over, I believe that the coup that happened in Turkey was a staged coup orchestrated not only by the U.S., but as well orchestrated in conjunction with Erdogan himself to make him look like he was the underdog in the bully U.S. Uh, Obama administration was there to try to overthrow him. That was to build a relationship between President Putin and Erdogan to where Turkey could bring its own troops and military inside of Syria. Well, the plan worked very well because President Putin didn't expect that he would be lied to by this guy. But unfortunately, the lies are on every side that you can imagine. And the sad thing is, is Tehran, who is now once again in another article here, according to Reuters, they're, one, they're saying that, that uh, Haifa and Tel Aviv, they will turn them to dust if Israel makes one wrong move. Now, they do state the Israeli government, but unfortunately, there are good members in that government as well. But, uh, but right now, someone is letting oh, the United States pull the strings of the Israeli military and that does concern me gravely. Now, uh, just real quick here, just in closing, let me share something with you as we're seeing this all happen. I cannot help but believe that Daniel 11 and verse 44 is really what we're starting to see happening. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him that him is the king of the north, which happens to be the king who is riding the beast just like we see Mystery Babylon the Great, she rides, uh, she happens to be on a beast as well. The beast is the NATO military powers that, uh, that trouble uh, the tidings that will, that will bother him. 
uh, back to it again, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy it and utterly to make away many. Are we seeing Daniel 11, 44 about to fulfill? We see also in another place where he says he will come in like a whirlwind with all of his ships when he returns and all of his planes of war. And could it be? I know I've had differing opinions on this here, but when it comes to Ezekiel 38, Gog, I do believe, is the United States. I know that there's some that say that this is Russia, but who knows? When it comes down to it, I believe Gog is the United States. If you was to take and lay it out and go right over the top of the globe, over the North Pole, it's directly due north from, from, from Israel, you hit the U.S. And I think that Gog, President Obama, will actually come in here with a great fury, and he's going to try to overrun all the lands. Even in Ezekiel, we find out it's Aratzot, it's lands, not specifically Israel, although all nations will gather against Israel in the very end. It is not a good situation. And I think now President Putin is starting to see who the real enemies are. It's sad. It puts, as I said in closing, it puts the good Americans, the good Israelis, the good British, it puts so many good people that love Israel and love this land. It puts these people at risk. We already have enough enemies as it is. We do not need such foolish decisions. But then again, did not Daniel say that the sons of the lawless of your people will try to marry the vision? Why are they just overrunning all these, all these nations? Prophecy being fulfilled. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live.